We're in Peru. Uh, it's, a, it's a journey that I don't even know how to explain. The most difficult thing I've ever done in my life was this, going to Peru this last time. Uh, what do you do when you're in another country and uh, you're, you know who you are in Christ, but how do you start a conversation? I mean, when you're with a bunch of politicians uh, because the governor said they're going to be, you be there, and so you have to be there, and they don't want to be there. <laughs> and, uh, and all of a sudden, they're all there, and then you, they say, speak. <laughs> and uh, one of the guys coming up the stairs that day, I'm greeting them as they're coming up the stairs, and I, you know, and I, buenas noches. And the guy grabs my hand and he goes, buenas noches. And as he walked by, I told my wife, I don't think he meant it. <laughs> you know, I mean, I thought, man, he's ticked. He does not want to be here. And yet God would come down. I don't know how to describe these things. It's an unbelievable moment how the Lord loves people. And, and uh, I looked at this man. He was about three rows back and just staunch. Just, he, he's the kind of a, a guy that looked like if you're in an alleyway, you want him on your side, you know. And uh, yet at the end, he was head bowed, emotional mess. And I thought, Lord, you're doing something in his life. You're taking his life somewhere. When all of a sudden you go into the police station and you're, gonna, you're on the third floor of a police station and all these police officers, all the men on this side, all the women on this side, and all of a sudden they say, speak. <laughs> How do you start? Speak. What does that mean? You know, where do you, where do you go? And then they just, God came in and did it. In the military. Now, the, the military, I knew I was going to have fun because of special forces. Okay, now, for you that haven't been in that arena, I was in that arena a long time ago, and somehow it gets tattooed. It's a living tattoo in your soul. It stays with you forever. You can't shake it off. It's just there. And so they meet us. They show us the, the, the um, museum. They do all these wonderful things. We saw all the, the, the how 472 of them died uh, fighting the cartel. From 1989, 2012, they conquered the cartel. They beat them. They show the... the t- in the jungle, carrying the, the head of the cartel out of the jungle, dragging him out barefoot, and uh, it's over. This is a man that had executed many, many hundreds of people. They're vicious over there, and now there's peace in Peru, and so you, then they take me to the shooting range, you know, and they're all pumped, and we're down there in the shooting range, and the colonel's calling out things, and you go through all this, and how do you, what do you do? I mean, how does this get going? And I looked, and I said, You've got to be what you are. You've got to be what you are. And I'm thinking, Father, I'm here. You, you opened these doors. I don't know what I'm doing here. I don't know how this is going to work. And yet he would come down and lead him, people to himself. I spoke to a thousand college students. And uh, I didn't know what I was going to do. I go in there and they had somebody talking for an hour almost about leadership of some kind or economics. And then a uh, guy gets up and it does, sings some rap. And he was really good. I mean, I don't, you know, I'm not a rapper, okay? I'm, that, I, I, don't, I know you're going to find that shocking, but, but I love this guy. It was like this soft, and I could hear him singing about Jesus Christos, and I love the man. I'm going to get him over here. His name's Isaac. He's just been married like three or four weeks now, but he's a great man of God. We would do festivals together. They, they call them festivals. We used to call them crusades. But he was there. And then Pepe, Pepe is a, was eight times in a row the strongest man in the world. And I mean, he's, he's 52 now, and he's still exceedingly strong, okay? But he's not the strongest man in the world anymore. In fact, it was really fun because I have a nephew who's been Mr. Iceland 14 years in a row, bodybuilding. And I said, okay, what's it, Pepe, what's the difference between the strongest man in the world and the bodybuilders. He said, well, we are strong, they are pretty. (laughs) And they preach Christ. I mean, I wish you could have seen it. But the reason I want to talk to you about this is, you know, it's even like wearing this shirt, and I was thinking, you never know what God's going to do in your life. And over there, when you meet a Christian there, I don't care if they're 80 years old or they're 10, they're sharing Christ. They go outside, they live in the resurrected life. They live united with Christ. And I'm not going to tell you everything's perfect. It's not. There's nothing, there, 
perfect is repentance. <laughs> we get to repent. But there is a joy of the Lord. And I wanted you to see this a little bit today because I talked to you about how does a man conquer his own sin? I mean, the problem with Christianity in America is we can't even conquer our own sin. I mean, we're so addicted to our own sin. We're addicted to pornography. We're addicted to drugs. We're addicted to anger. We're addicted to worry. I, can't, I, don't, I don't get that one at all. I'm addicted to worry and anxiety. I, I says, how's that work for you all your life? I mean, it's just a mess up. But we're addicted to it. We don't seem to get over anything. And yet, the Scripture is so beautiful. This Sunday, I'm preaching here and Mike's allowed me to do that, and something I wanted to do for a long, long time. It's where I live, and it's what God had done in my life a long time ago. It's out of Romans 6, 1 and 2, and I call, because of grace, who are we? Because of grace, who are we? Not what am I trying to become. I'm not, I'm not trying to improve myself. Who am I? Because of God's grace, who am I? Well, I'm united with Christ. I'm united in His death. I'm united not just in His death. I'm united in the resurrection. That means I've entered into a new life. And how do I live that life? By faith in my God. By faith from first to last. That's why I'm not ashamed of the gospel. That's how you can get up and play. And I'm going to tell you what, you can get physically just downright weary. I was physically exhausted in Peru. I mean, just absolute brain dead stupid. I would tell my wife, I, don't, I can't even think of my name. I'm so tired. Pray for me. And she, I had to get after her a few times. I did. I love her. But a few times she said, oh, honey, it's just natural to you. I said, quit saying that. It may, may be natural to me, but what's natural right now is, who am I? <laughs> you know, I was so, I'm physically just exhausted. And then God would come in and whoa, and she would pray over me and bless me. And I thought, thank you. I just needed the blessing. But I looked at this and I think, listen to these words. In Romans, five, in, in Romans 6, 5, if, now here's the care. This is the kicker. You've got to know, have you been united with Christ in the likeness of his death? Do you know that you have? If you have, you've broken the power of sin. It was broken as the controller of your life. It doesn't mean it left the room. It doesn't mean that it has just vanished out of air. No, its power was broken. I became united. And that's why it says, if, if you have been, we have been united with him in the likeness of his death, if we shall certainly also be united with him in the resurrection. A, a different translation is this way. For if we have become this in the same, because to be united is the word to graft. It's to, like a plant. You know what? We live in a beautiful place here, don't we? I mean, you remember, remember all the uh, walnut trees? that we, we still have a lot up here. You go up in Peach Canyon, and you'll see a trunk, and then you'll see a different plant on the trunk. I mean, you, you, you see that. If you've been up to Santa Cruz, they've got some trees over there. They started like this, okay, like this. And somehow at the top, about 100 feet up, they joined. Now it's one, it's, it's one tree. But it comes out on two different deals. I mean, it was the weirdest thing. You ever see it? You, you get up at Crescent City, up in the Redwoods up there. I, I was driving in this back road with Karen a few years back, and we had our motor home, and we were in our car just going through a place. We wanted to be away from people and see the trees. And we are on these dirt roads, and all of a sudden, here was these two trees. They were going straight up. You know how tall they are. And they said about 50 to 100 years ago, they touched, and then they became one. And I think, that's what it means to be united with Christ. I was united with Christ. I started here in death. I started in sin. But I'm telling you what, I got united with Christ. And how do you know that? I'm not ashamed of the gospel. Why? It's the power of God. Why? It's for salvation. What is salvation? A righteousness is revealed. From first to last, it's a power of God, a righteousness. And it's what I am. I declare who I am in Christ. I declare who Christ is. I declare what he has done in my life. I was a sinner. I was a man who ought to go to hell. I was a man that's self-centered. I was a man addicted to all kinds of immorality. I was a man addicted to a foul mouth. In 1969, in September, late September of 1969, just outside of Detroit in a nightclub. I got kicked out of the nightclub. I got kicked out of a nightclub because, and we had to dress up. In those days, you had to dress up to go to a nightclub. We couldn't look like we look like this, okay? And, and the bouncers in the nightclub wore tux, okay? And these two bouncers came to me and said, sir, we, we have to ask you to leave. Your mouth is so foul, you're offending the people around you. And I was like, what the, you know, 
I was out of the Marine Corps, didn't even know I was foul. I look at these things. Who changed this man? I didn't go on a self-improvement program, improvement program. The thing is, it's Christ alone. If we have been united, so watch. So if we become of the same plant in the likeness of his death, we shall also be of the same plant in the likeness of his resurrection. What does that mean? I have been united in a new life. I declare it. How do I declare it? By faith. I know who I am because of Christ. I'm not, and what's happened in America is that we've become ignorant to our own sin, so we just, and ignorant to the power of God's grace. It's, we're saying we believe it, but we're not, we don't know how to live. It's almost like we're afraid to announce, I've been set free from the power of my sin. It's like we, we don't want to say it. We don't want to. We don't want to act like we've had a problem. We don't want to ask for forgiveness. There, I mean, if, if there is no condemnation, how hard is it to ask for forgiveness? <laughs> I don't have any condemnation anyway. Carl, by the way, I have a bunch of ammo for you today, okay? So don't leave until I give you the ammo, okay? <laughs> I have a lot of ammo, okay? A friend of mine died. <laughs> Sold all his weapons, but he left ammo, <laughs> okay? So I have a few. Uh, that's on tape now. Oh, that's really cool. Okay. <laughs> this is a band of brothers. We're looking for a fight, okay? So we... <laughs> and, I <laughs> and I'm the ammo guy today, okay? But I wanted, I wanted you to see this. This is so beautiful. Listen to the Word of God. If. You're the only one that can answer the if. Nobody can answer that for you. If we have been united with Him in the likeness of His death... If we have, we will certainly also be united with him in his resurrection. What do you mean? For we know. What do you mean you know? What is faith? It is sure. I know. I'm certain. This isn't a guessing game. I'm not living some gassy experience. I'm not sitting there one day, oh, I'm in Jesus. Next day, I'm in hell. No. I know who I am in Christ. I know what Christ has done with me. He has given me a new life. I have the privilege of being transformed in the renewing of my mind. And when I renew my mind, I can tell you this. I can present this body, I live in this tent, to the glory of God all the time. And when sin does happen in my life, which it has happened, obviously, I get the privilege of repentance, which is always an act of worship. So, for we know that our old self was crucified with him. Why? Why was it crucified? So, so that what? The body of sin might be done away with. Why am I united with Christ? Why are you united with Christ? The body of sin is done away with. Do you think any woman is going to be sick and tired of you? I've never had a woman come in here and say, I'm divorcing my husband. He is too kind. He is too thoughtful. And he communicates too well. It just doesn't happen. Think what would happen in a community if just godly men lived godly men. They just lived. <laughs> they were unashamed of the gospel. They were unashamed of Christ. They knew who they were. They're not religious at all, but they surely have a new life. And when they live in that new life, people are going to walk up to them and say, I want to know the Jesus you know. I don't want that other stuff, but that Jesus I want to know. Why? For we know, we know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body of sin might be done away with. That we should no longer, what? That we should, why do I know this? That I would no longer be a slave to sin. What is this going on, this slave? I mean, how many times, how much counseling do we have? I was talking with some people the other day, and they've been going to counseling for three years. So I said, how's it working? <laughs> oh, and they, Mike, they pay to go to the counselor. Okay? Big bucks. They're not coming to us. We don't get diddly squat. Okay? This guy opens up a deal and starts a counselor, and people coming in there for three years. I'm thinking, you've been in there for three years? You ought to fire the counselor. <laughs> How is it working? How about this? What if you could go to the counselor of all counselors? What if you could go to the mighty God? What if he could declare to you, you are set free from your sin? What if he declares to you, you can be transformed in the renewing of your mind? Would you believe him? Would you take him at his word? Or would you go back and pay $70, $80 a day or an hour for a counselor? 
and just spend it for years and years and years because you won't by faith. For we know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body of sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves to sin. Why? Because anyone who has died is freed from sin. What do you mean? Anyone, man or woman, that has died, they're free from their occupation, whatever their occupation was. I mean, it's over. They can, not, there's nothing. While I was in Peru, a dear friend of mine died, Don Cundall. Don Cundall was a very wealthy man at one time, and he, he got married at 19. His wife was 25. Along the journey, he was a commercial developer and builder and all that, all in the central coast here, did really, really well. His wife got cancer, so he just stopped working. And when his wife got cancer, he bought an exceedingly, exceedingly expensive motorhome. Mike, you know the motorhome. You remember. All you'd had to do was look at the ceiling in the motorhome, and you'd have known it was expensive. Well, you could look to the outside and know it was expensive. 45-footer, tag axle, the whole thing. He goes through all of this, and he takes care of her all those years. She had cancer for seven years. In about the fifth year, the cancer took her body to nothingness. I mean, just sucked the life right out of her. In about six months to maybe a little longer than that, she went total dementia. He took care of her like you would not believe. He took care of her as if it was effortless, and yet I know he was exhausted. When she died, he went into a dark place. I met him about two and a half years after she died, and he, I met him out here at, at, at our, in our RV place in 09. And uh, he was a very gripey, grumpy old man. And about six months, we got to know each other, and, I, and just, anyway, I won't go to all the details, but anyway, he comes to know Christ. And he becomes a man of absolute joy. And then one day he says to me, this was years ago, he says, I want you to be the executor of my estate. And I said, I don't want to be executor of diddly squat. And he said, no, I'll come over here. So he shows me and he lifts up his bed in his motor home. And I have never seen so much gold in all my life. I mean, not on a movie. I mean, I'm looking at bars of gold and silver and coins. And I'm, Gee, wow, what are you doing? I said, I don't want anything to do with that. Well, as the years went by, he eventually sold all that. Because he was just... He was reducing his lifestyle, but you're used to a lifestyle. And he reduced it. He used all of his funds along his journey. All right, so then I get a call, and he always told me then afterwards, if anything happens to me, Gus, go into my bedroom and strong box, and it'll tell you what to do. Well, I don't want you to tell me that. I don't want to do that. Well, they call me and let me know that Don had died because I'm his emergency deal. And so then I came out, I got back on a Sunday at 5 o'clock, and we left at 2.30 in the morning to go to Tucson, my wife and I, and got out there and found out that he left not in the strong box, but in his nightstand, a little thing that says, to whom it may concern. If anything happens to me, I leave everything I have to Gus, Bess. And I'm saying, you don't have anything anymore. And I don't want anything. Well, it doesn't matter. So I had to learn this whole probate thing, and I'm, I'm still, it's not over at all. I mean, I was out there for 11 days, and I got to do all this stuff. The reason I'm telling you this is when I, I had to find out all kinds of things. I had to find his Social Security card. I had to find his birth certificates. I got I to gotta go to all these places. I got to find He had a little storage bin, I gotta, which I found out where he, he used to go to gun shows, buy guns, and sell them out of his storage bin. And anyway, do all this stuff. So I, go, I finally found out where it is, and here's what happens. I go into the, the storage place, and I, I have the letter from the, that I'm now special administrator. So I can empty his apartment. I can do these things. And I walk into this place and I say, hi, I didn't tell him who I was. I said, I have a paper from the Superior Court. And I said, I'm here for Don Cundall. He's a friend of mine and he died. And when I said that to this lady, she got all teary-eyed. She goes, Don? I said, yeah. Oh, I've never met a kinder, more loving man. That's what it means to be united with Christ and united in the resurrection. I've never met a more kind and loving man. This grumpy old man. And now I've never met a kind of man. And I said, well, he died on August 8th. And I said, I'm, she said, hold it. I know who you are. <laughs> I said, you know who I am? She said, yeah, you're Gus Bess. I said, yes, I am. She said, he always talked about you and said, if anything happened, a man's going to come in here and his name's Gus Bess. I look back at these things and I've got a lot of things I've got to deal with. That's how you're getting ammo. Okay. <laughs> And, uh, but I look back at this and I said, men, what's happened to us? What's happened to American men? We're still gripey. If you've been united with Christ, if you've been united with Him, and how might you have been united with Him? In the likeness of His death. I'm dead to the power of sin. I'm, I know it's here. 
I know that. I'm dead to its condemnation. But I've also been certainly united. This is something I know. I know. What do I know? I know I have been, I've been united with him in his life. How does that work? Well, here I am in, in Peru, and I'm preaching. God already tells me this. He tells me what I'm going to do. I, t- I took with me over a hundred sermons. I didn't use one. <laughs> Not one. You know what I used? The Word of God, period. <laughs> Many times I had it in my hand and I'm quoting. And I get up there and there's a thousand students. Now these are college students. These kids are mostly 19 to about 23. I noticed a man in the back that was definitely over 23. He looked like about 30. He was in about the third row from the back and the, they had all these, these different aisles. And I just kept noticing him. And I, when I gave the invitation to come and receive eternal life, come and receive grace, come and receive a life that, is, that the joy of the Lord would be your strength, not a single person moved. The people were there in that room were all nervous about it. I, they told me this later. I thought, I wasn't nervous at all because God told me something was going to happen. And then he said to me, invite the men. So I said, men, you young men, you know God is calling you. You need to get here now and receive him. You need to receive his eternal life. And those three men got up, and then five men got up, and then two got up here. And there in the back, they started to come, and then an ocean wave took off. It was like a mass of humanity just stood up, and 278 of those people came to Christ that day. Isn't that an amazing journey for you? Don't you think that's an amazing journey? (laughs) Only, you know, only God can lead someone to Christ. Only God can draw. And it was holy. But we have to be the men, and we have to be those men, not try to be something. We're not on a self-improvement program. We have been united with Christ in the likeness of his death. For you that will be here on Sunday, I hope to blow your hair back. Because I was saying, because of grace, who are we? You know, verses 1 and 2, you'll see it. And I looked at it, and I said, this is who we are. And when I know this is what I am, then I know you're going to be attracted. Why? Because God says, you went from death to life. You went from darkness to light. And when he's calling somebody from darkness, he's calling them into light. And if you're not light, they don't want what you are. (laughs) Even if you're using the words, they want what you are if, if it is light. They want what you are if they can see life. And we need men of God to repent and become to life again. Amen? That's what our, our, our deal is about at Band of Brothers. And that's, that's where we're going to go. In. Our, our time's gone at this moment. Uh, so we're going to have the band come back up. And we're going to let's sing to the Lord. And I want to give something to you guys. I want to say this to you. Men of God, you, you can answer this. If you are united with Christ in the likeness of his death. The term is if. Do you know that you are? You can, amen? Then it's Amen. Do you know then, then you shall certainly know, if that is true, you certainly know you have been united with him in the resurrection, which is a new life, free, overcoming the power of sin. Why? So that you are no longer a slave to the sin of your own life. Amen? Amen. That is the power of salvation in Jesus Christ. So that being true, let's stand and let's sing to the Lord. Amen. Only God's amazing grace.